Hello and welcome back to the worst War Machine channel on the internet. I'm Malorian and it's time for another War Machine Battle Report. Now this one comes from not a local, it comes from AJ, a guy that I've been chatting to online for a while. And what he said to me is like, you know what Malorian, I want to challenge your Magnus 2 list. I'm like, okay, <laughs> it's one of my most powerful lists that I like playing right now. He's like, yeah, I got a Striker 3 list that's going to take it down. I'm like, okay, let's do this. So obviously where AJ is coming from this is that the new storm division came out it has some cute new tricks and I mean I didn't know the list until we actually played but I assumed it had something to go around you can't charge me and because of striker three I'm now going to charge you I'm going to automatically hit I'm going to do massive damage and then actually punch through and break through the whole uh, Magnus type list now Obviously, you know, this whole thing's going to be more so not like, uh, I'm going to crush you and destroy you. Whenever I have games with AJ, it's more like, I got this crazy jank and I want to see what it does. So don't really take away from this list. Like, you know, is, is one list going to win over the other? The main thing I'd be trying to take from this is more so like the idea of what the list is trying to do. So with that in mind, let's look at my list first. So my list and what I'm trying to do here with my Magnus list is a very simple irregulars list. I want to rush up there and smash you. I have the Blockader, two Tauros. I have the Tinker that also has Malvin and Mayhem. I have Aphyxius the Sanctified that's running a Stalker. And then I also have Anastasia. Uh, Savio, I have Widget, and also James slash Jams, which I only recently learned can charge farther thanks to Aphyxius, which is making me love that model even more. So again, I'm going to run up there, I'm going to lock you down, maybe just win on scenario, and if not, I'll just get to get this crushing alpha, and then because you're locked down, probably a second alpha on top of that. So that's my list. Pretty boring, pretty run up there. Let's see what jank AJ brings us today. And the jank that AJ brought is this. Like I said, it is in Storm Division. It's having Striker 3 with the two Centurions, which is playing more into that whole idea of you can't charge me, right? Uh, one of the things you don't want to have is something where you have something where uh, you can't charge me and the opponent can charge something else to be getting in there and then make attacks somewhere else. So you kind of have to really buy all in to be really safe with it. Uh, there's a squire in there. Of course, you got the new Gwen Keller that's going to be making everything harder to shoot. I don't have a lot of guns, but it's good for those other things. He has his own Savio, so maybe we'll have a, a, a turbo fight going on there. He has Sir Dreyfus. He has the Storm Captains, and of course, they're updated now as well so that they can be giving out Tactician, which is nice, but as well, Desperate Pace, which is what these Speed 5 infantry really needed to try and actually get those charges. So they're very important in the list. Uh, then you have the two units of the Silver line storm guard again if you're looking at the points here this is because you know uh conflict chamber still has to be updated so even though they went down in points uh it's not being reflected here so it's great that they're down points and they have that rule where they have are base to base you can't charge them in the front arc so they can really control those things he also has here the storm blade infantry i have the ua and the gunners and i mean like they've just basically been updated so that they're a lot more simpler to be used and with this was like okay the storm guard are going to slow you down this is a fantastic unit to be just like charging in there and doing tons of damage and then talking about fantastic units you also have these two stormsmith storm towers and their big update is now they just automatically disrupt things so if you're trying to control the damage things are doing to you i mean like one way to get past this i can't charge you thing is like well okay i'll just trample in and then buy attacks that's one sneaky way you can get some work done even though if you can't charge something well you can't do that stuff if you're disrupted so between disrupting some of my jacks i mean i'm sure he's gonna be trying to be getting the malvin and mayhem for sure uh but as well just like those little electro leaps might just kill some of your key solos you have to be very careful with these storm towers and another uh, cute thing with the tech here as well is that the storm towers are on a large base, but they have the man-sized rule, meaning that they count as having the size of a small base. So you can hide them behind your silver line, and then they can't be charged. It's actually very easy to be setting up a formation here where there's nothing to charge, 
except for Striker. Striker is the one thing that I feel is kind of the weakness for that strategy, but hey, that's what Terrain's for, and we'll see if that's going to be coming into play here. Hint, hint, it will. So looking at our deployment here, uh, I did win the roll because as with normal, I get plus one to go first, and I have a real roll, so I, I won that. Uh, he decided he wanted to go on the bottom there, and I'm sure that's because he has that wonderful forest with a flag, right? Like, that is going to be Striker 3's home. Striker 3 just wants to be back there, so it can't be seen, and scoring that flag and pretty much just... <laughs> in complete immunity to anything else. Uh, on the table here, you know, we have a couple of forests going across, a couple of walls on the left. I have two pieces of rubble in the top right, a cloud on the right, along with the, another wall, and then you have some shallow water on his side there. So when I deployed, my same idea is like how it always is, is that I just want to be charging up across the board. During that, I have to kind of work around this terrain. And so what I decided is that I'm going to be having my big, huge you know, uh, blockader going through this rubble that's kind of in my way. Uh, I really like this right side where I can be kind of working with the terrain to be making clouds and trying to bully it with my Gatsby, whereas where I really want to be with my Magnus is on the left side so I can fall back after my feet to that flag. Uh, meanwhile, you can see he's running a very tight formation there, uh, likely going to be trying to use that terrain to his advantage. Interesting to see that he's really pushing here on the right side, which makes me think that maybe I can bully the left side and be scoring the left zone, uh, especially with the way that wall works. It can kind of like trap things out as opposed to the wall on the right side where it's very easy just to like contest that zone. So that's what I'm kind of looking at right now, that probably if I'm going for a scenario, I'm pushing on the left side, you know, score that flag over and over again, destroy his objective, and really just trying to lock him down. And number one priority here, make sure he does not get a good alpha on me because that's what he does, right? With that feat, you automatically hit, you get additional dice of damage, you have fury for even more damage, and even though I have on yielding on my jacks, he can very easily crush them if, if he gets that alpha on me. All right, so on turn one, what happened here is that basically I went and cast Escort, I put Bullet Dodger up onto Gatsby, and then, yeah, things just basically charged up. If it was Magnus, I was going to, I got to use my advantage. This is probably the only time I'll get the charge with Magnus, so I was able to see something and charge it, so hurrah. Uh, There's a little captain that was over there that I could see, and then, yeah, everything else basically just running up there, Malvin and Mayhem going for the, the flight and the extra speed, and zooming up there uh, by the way my prey target for the the right unit there with uh, jams rather not unit a solo is going to be dreyfus i kind of expect dreyfus to be jumping in my face to be contesting things trying to be a pain so i'd really like to have uh, james slash jams there able to take out dreyfus as soon as possible plus it's kind of nice to have kind of a you know a right quest fight all right, going on to his turn then, this is where he's going to be using first the Storm Captains to go up there, giving desperate pace. The Silver Line are going to run up there, making sure to utilize the walls on the right and base to base so that I can't charge them. Uh, the Centurions getting an extra focus so that they can go up there and have their Polarity Shields up so they can't be charged. Uh, the Storm Towers trying to run up there and getting to a spot. Uh, and in fact, this is where he kind of made one mistake, where the Storm Tower on the left Remember I told you they're man sized so they can hide? Well, it's actually peeking out there. So I can actually see it and charge it if I want to try and actually get a charge with Magnus. Um, but we'll talk more about that later. Otherwise, you know, the Stormblade staying safe behind, uh, like I thought, Striker 3 loving that flag there. And uh, yeah, this is his first turn. So normally what I do in my turn is, okay, I'm going to charge up in feet. I'm going to charge with my things. I'm going to decimate your army and... And then laugh. Well, I can't do that because I can't charge things. Uh, one of the things I could do is I could actually put flight onto Malvin and he could get into the infantry on the right. And because he had, if I push the red button, I have the, the overkill basically. So I can kill and move and kill and move. Maybe I could eat through the entire unit, but odds are I get stuck somewhere, especially with those two centurions and I'd lose my model for, you know, trying to take out half of a unit. So that's not going to be worth it. So I actually had to stop here and kind of think like, oh man, what can I do? I mean, I can walk up with Magnus and then I can feet and then I can try and lock down some of the things on the left but they would not lock down anything on the right I'd have to really hide from the charges 
And it really kind of made me think of how before I actually had Boom Howler 2 in this list, so I could actually repo in these cases where line of sight was causing an issue. Uh, but even then, a lot of the other pieces are far enough back that it's going to cause me some trouble. So after thinking about this for a while, it's just like, okay, I cannot approach this like a regular game. My objective is going to get Magnus behind the forest so that next turn I can definitely lock down whatever I want. Everything is going to be staying outside of the 12 inch threat of his uh, silver line. That's going to be helped with clouds on the right. And then I'm just going to have to wait out a turn and see what I can do next time. So that's what I did. I mean, I, I didn't really move up very much at all. You can see there on the right, I can put those clouds there in front of him so he can't see me. So that really helps. Uh, he can see the blockader. Always remember that though. Those huge bases are not uh, blocked by clouds. They can still see you. So I had to kind of keep things kind of smart over there and keep the blockader a little bit back. But yeah, everything kind of holding the line on the right side. Magnus and the stalker hiding there in the left ready to do some pouncing. On the left side, he can't actually get anything on onto my my good old widget there because of that wall so that's fantastic i can be threatening that flag and say either run in to contest or nothing and then the the two toros were in a spot where they can't be charged by anything however if he does want to come up here and contest my flag i'm going to make him earn it by counter charging and trying to kill those things so trying to make things difficult on the left which is funny because at first i thought the left side right the left side's where i'm going to score and dominate yeah that's just not going to work the way that things are going on here so so definitely already uh, playing a very different game because of what this uh, Storm Division list can do. So going on to his turn then, uh, basically the Silver Line got the... Uh, desperate pace again, rushing up, getting to a spot where, you know, they're just kind of setting up a good line for everything up behind, uh, going up with the Centurion so they can kind of threaten me with having the uh, polarity shields up. But I think the biggest thing here that was going to change the, the course of this game is that already with what's going on here, okay, now I'm in feet time. Uh, since my I have Escort, I can basically just like walk up. And by the way, he has Escort too. That's also something why his Centurion are faster um, but because of escort I don't need to charge a silver line now I can just walk up and start making attacks uh, Magnus is in a really good spot where I could just like swivel up on the left and lock everything down whereas everything on the right you know I can either try and smash them or just trying to ignore them type thing by just destroying what I need to and then putting clouds again however one of the things he did go for that like I said is going to change things is he thought he had a chance to try and take out Gatsby you know with putting out two clouds I was only camping one so striker actually comes up takes a shot at gatsby um, and again i have bullet dodger so it's harder to hit me so that one missed uh then tried or maybe that hit you know that actually hit and then did a bit of damage uh and then he did a spell to me to try and do more damage and that one missed scattered and that actually killed one of my servitors which is going to give swift vengeance to now my acosta and the main thing now is that like okay now striker is up there kind of for me to charge and, and kill because it's now in a spot where I could charge it with either Gatsby or Malvin and Mayhem and then after that also get on my blockader as well. I mean obviously I have some infantry at the clear out of the way first but I mean a striker that's sitting there uh, camping nothing with all those threats on it mm, this is going to be coming to an end quick. So I'm not going to bury the lead. Let's just get to it. The first thing I did is Savu came up with its vengeance attack, killed one, then went and killed the other one that was standing there. Um, I had to kill off the infantry on the left with my Magnus and then also with the uh, stalker there. So the stalker jumped over, killed something, Magnus sprayed, killed something. Then everything was cleared up. And so because Gatsby has better, better potential than the Malvin and Mayhem, Gatsby went in and that's all I needed, right? Came in. Uh, boost to hit the charge attack, did some massive damage, bought one, boost to hit, and just finished the deal right there. So the way that this ended was, okay, I got the win, but I want to rewind back to my turn two and that situation, right? And I feel like this is the main reason why we're playing this, right? Is that AJ's like, hey, I got this cool list. I want to try out an idea. And I wanted to use this battle report to more focus on that idea. And I think at first, when I first saw like the, the Storm Division came out, I was like, ah, I don't know. I don't think it's going to be that great. But now that I've seen more and more of these silver line lists that are stopping the charges, so much of the meta right now 
is dependent on charges, right? Long threats, which are getting even longer because there's, you know, bloodlust or whatever coming from Gatsby. So you're, you're charging across the board. But if you can't charge, a lot of these benefits don't actually apply anymore, right? If you have one of these things where it gives you plus two movement or whatever, whenever you're charging, if you cannot charge, you're missing out on the three inches plus whatever bonuses you have as well. So that really then really knocks down what can come in against you. Um, there's a lot of things you can do defensively for shooting now that you have there. And of course, these are things that can hit pretty well going back at the same time. Uh, I'm not really sure that striker three is the way that you'd want to go with this. I think you'd want to go maybe with something more like uh, a Beth Maddox type thing, or maybe you want to go with a Striker 2 type thing. But either way, you know, playing this list against AJ really opened my eyes. It's like, wow, I, I always have to, I basically go on autopilot. When I go and play my Magnus, deploy, run up first turn, feet, smash, finish the game. You know, like it's always kind of like the same sort of routine. This one was not routine. I had to play my game completely differently and had Striker 3 not poked the nose out, things could have gotten extremely interesting because it would have been difficult for me to actually kill the Citurians on the right. Hopefully I could, you know, it kind of depend on what I could do. But I mean, the biggest thing is that then his follow-up turn could have been pretty devastating depending on what he was able to charge in on me, uh, depending how far up I got up there at that feet. So either way, that's what I hope you get with this takeaway is this show off is like, wow, there's actually a lot of potential of what this storm division list can do. And it has me looking like I own two units of silver line. Uh, basically I bought them because I'm a completionist and then I primed them and then never had the motivation to paint them. And you know what? I am now motivated to paint them. So I got 20 silver line I'm going to have to start working on. And I mean, who knows? I mean, they know they don't have a UA. Who knows what a UA could be added here in, you know, like hashtag design space, whatever uh, plans that Privateer Press might have. So there you go. Thanks for listening and watching. Uh, if you have any thoughts on what we've been talking about, the list, any of that type of stuff, please put it down below. And otherwise, we'll catch you later. Bye. <laughs>